Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com and I'm going to introduce you to the cobweb model. Recall that the market equilibrium supply has to equal to demand and the solution of that, if we've got here the supply set and the demand set, is where the two lines cross. So here is the equilibrium. Okay, so we can have the coordinate there, equilibrium, say Q star, so the equilibrium quantity, and P star. But uh, how do we reach that equilibrium? Can we just assume that the markets just hit equilibrium straight away? That's not so realistic. And so the cobweb model is a model that explains how we reach this equilibrium point when we are starting off equilibrium. In other words, when we are not at the equilibrium price and quantity. How do we reach this equilibrium point when we are somewhere off the equilibrium? And can we reach it? In other words, a cobweb model is a dynamic model of equilibrium. Dynamic meaning that it involves time. The prices and quantities will be adjust over time in such a way that eventually we, it reaches the equilibrium point, if this can happen. This is in contrast to our when we first met the supply and demand curves, where we look at the static problem. So we simply want to find where they cross. Static, not involving time. We're just interested in is the equilibrium and where is it. The two equations that make up the cobweb model is the supply and the here the inverse demand. And what we notice is this. Look at the subscripts. T QT, the subscript T means the quantity and supplied at time T. T may be in years, may be in months, may be in days, it's whatever units the data is in, okay? But what's crucial here is you can see that the supply, quantity supplied at time t depends on the price, because this is a function of price, in the previous time period. In other words, the suppliers are acting like one lag behind. They're looking at, say, the previous prices to set the quantity that they will supply in the next period. So we think about uh, weeks here. They look at last week's prices to determine what they're going to supply this week. The demand, on the other hand, you can see this um, the, in the demand side, they'll pay the, for the price P at time T when they see that the quantity is what the quantity is supplied at time T. In other words, it's like at, everything is in this time period. So for the demand side, they see what the quantity is supplied in this period, say, and they'll de that determines the price they're willing to pay in this period. Okay, now this cobweb model gets its name, you'll see in a moment, is because of the way, the nature in which this uh, equilibrium, P star, Q star, is reached. Say, suppose we start at the period zero. So let's start the story. It always starts off with the supply side, because that starts at time period before everything else. So let's call it P zero. Okay. And the supply, it kicks off the supply side. So it says that if the supplier sees what the price is in the initial time period, that will determine what he is going to supply. So we have to read off the graph here, the supply in the next period. is going to supply mount Q1, meaning that ne the next period. So P0, that's P0. So T minus 1 is 0. That must mean that T is 1. So Q is 1. Okay, now it flips over to the demand side. So now the, the, the so Q1 mount in the market, and the people are looking to buy. They see that that is the demand, that is the mount in the market. Well, according to the demand curve, they're prepared to pay less. Okay, because that's P0 is higher than this amount here. Uh, in this period, they're prepared to pay this much. Now the supplier seeing that they're prepared to pay this much. That he kind of revises his um, decision or revises his plan on how much to produce in the next period. 
according to this, if, he's, if he sees the price in time one at this level, the supply curve determines what amount he's going to produce, what he's going to supply, sorry, in the next period, he's going to supply this much. Now we've gone from a market, or in step one, where there's quite a, uh, a Q1 amount, and the second period now, there's less amount in the market. So people seeing that there's less amount in the market, obviously they're going to be prepared to pay more. How much more? This much more. So now they're going to pay P2. So the story flips back and forth between supply and demand. And if we connect the lines, you can get see the idea that eventually you know, I'm going to reach the equilibrium. There. That is Q star, say, P star. And that's where you get the name cobweb form, because it looks like cobweb. So intuitively, well, let's let's put it another way. Let's try to put this another way without graphs. So there's a certain amount on the market. Uh, the more there is on the market, the less I'm going to be paid. But if less I'm going to be paid, the supplier is going to produce less. And then if I see that there's less in the market, I'll suddenly be prepared to pay more. And then when the supplier sees that suddenly I'm prepared to pay more, it's going to supply more. See? So that's like how it works. You can see then what is happening to the prices. Let's go another step. The prices start off high level, then it goes to a low level, then it goes to a high level, then it goes to a low level. So it's fluctuating, isn't it? It's fluctuating, and so it's quantity. High, low, that'll be high, low, high, low, high, low. In other words, you can think about a time graph involving time here, because since this is a dynamic model of equilibrium, it must be quite useful to look at a time plot. So scale and time, let's look at the price. And this graph here corresponds to this. So first of all, I start off at time zero at this level. This is P0. Okay. Eventually, at some point, I'm going to reach P star. Let's say, let's say first of all, just my, uh, let's get a nicer graph than this. I'm trying to show things, make them nice and large. That's it. Is that large enough? Okay, let's say that this is, no, that's not nice enough. Okay, I'm back again. Let's say here now. Let's say this is P star. Doesn't matter where I stick it so long as it's above zero. So what this says is I uh, I am start P zero, but in the next time period I drop, since this is the equilibrium, P star, I drop below equilibrium. So let's say P one is here. But this will be in the next period. Then it says I got P to P2 and P2 now is above equilibrium. So you can see what's going to happen. Let's draw this line to show you that is the equilibrium P star, right? All this along is P star. You can see that over time, this is what's doing high, below, above equilibrium price, below equilibrium price, above, below, above, until eventually over time it settles down and because it reaches. P star at this point is when it suddenly hits that line and stays there. You can imagine similarly the thing is going to happen with quantity as well. So I could replace this PT by QT and it's going to look the same. For both prices and quantity they are just in a fluctuating manner above and below, fluctuating above and below the equilibrium point, but over time it reaches it given certain under certain circumstances. Okay, so cobweb model is um is a model, it's a dyn is a dynamic model of equilibrium. Explains how prices and quantity reach an equilibrium point. But it doesn't mean that this model is applicable always. It doesn't always hold. And we're going to see an example of this later on. Now in our classes, we're interested to describe how the prices, 
change over time and there is an equation for that which I'm going to write down now. Okay, so we present only the linear case that is when the line for supply set and demand set of a straight line. We call the formula for straight line. So here this is a straight line isn't it? With uh, intercept of minus A and slope of B but that is for the supply curve. Demand curve like this and we need the condition that B and D is bigger than zero because these the B and D determine the slope of the, the uh, inverse supply and inverse demand. Remember this line here is the, the graph of the inverse supply. This is of the inverse demand because they're both functions of Q. In other words uh, we have to rearrange this for P if we want the inverse supply and inverse demand. But if we do that, we will find that the slope of the inverse supply is 1 over B and the slope of the inverse demand is 1 over D. Okay, That's why we need B and D bigger than 0. Uh, well, I made a mistake slightly here. Uh, yeah, B and D have to be bigger than 0. I should have put a minus here, look. Because the slope of the inverse supply is positive, being 1 over B, upward sloping. QP. The slope of the inverse demand is negative, the slope being 1 over D, negative 1 over D. And that's why D must be a positive, because if D was negative, two negatives makes a positive. That would be the wrong slope. Okay. Next, I present the general solution without, I'll just give you the result without the proof, because in this applied course we just need to know how to use it. General solution for the price is equal to the time independent solution that's P star in other words that is the equilibrium price plus the P0 that's the initial price minus the equilibrium price times by minus B over D where both B and D are positive yeah so in other words and this is always going to be minus a positive number to the power of T time and that's where what we have for P star that's the equilibrium point Similarly for quantity, now I know this has not been pre presented in lectures, but hey, who knows, they could ask you for it, couldn't they? Huh? So here is a similar one for the quantity, which also fluctuates from the picture that I've shown you earlier, where the Q star is this. Now, does, the equilibri does this uh, cobweb model always reach an equilibrium? If it does, we say that it, the, we have a stable, a stable solution, or the market equilibrium is stable. Otherwise, the market equilibrium is not stable. In other words, if we start off at a point which is not equilibrium, uh, the cobweb model uh, doesn't get us to the equilibrium. Right. So what must happen is that we can we can get it from these equations. Let's press focus on the price. So somehow we want P T to eventually reach P star over time. Okay. So we have to look at the terms. So there's two terms here. This plus second term. First term P star does not depend on time so there's no point looking at it. This second term was made up of a product. P0 minus P star does not depend on time so it just remains constant over time. So it's only this guy here which changes over time. Yep. Yeah. So when does PT, how does, when is it case that PT will reach P star? It must mean that over time this number gets smaller and smaller and smaller so you're timesing a number that's smaller and smaller and smaller by a number so this second term eventually tends to zero. Well when does that happen? That will happen if the number B is less than the number D. Okay. And then if B is less than D, it must mean that this fraction is less than one and any number which is a fraction uh, less than one to the power of T will tend to zero. Try it on your calculator. I put in 0.1 to the power of set t to 2 and then set t to 10, set t to 100, you'll see that that figure tends to 0. Okay, that's the first thing. Importantly, note that because we said that b and d are bigger than 0, therefore it's always going to be a form minus a, a number to the power of t. Minus a number to the power of t for, means that 
this number here to the power of t is going to fluctuate positive, negative, positive, negative. Right? Say negative, say this is negative 0.1 to the power of t is 1, that's negative 1. Set t is 2, negative 1 to the power of 2, it's going to be a positive number. So this thing is going to be fluctuating between positive and negative. And that precisely, that, that equation precisely describes what's happening here positive and then negative, positive, negative, above equilibrium, below equilibrium. Yeah, because here you you will be adding on a number to equilibrium, then you'll be subtracting a number from the equilibrium. So you'll be above the line and then below the line. Above, below, below, above, below, and so on. Okay. Similarly with quantity, because you can see it's exactly the same term there. So because that's important, let's state that of sort of stability condition, meaning that if I'm off equilibrium, that I the Cobweb model will get me to the equilibrium over time. So here's the stability condition. Stability condition is if if the figure B is less than D. Uh, but um, that's very technical. That's not you know what what heck does that mean? Let's translate to something where which we understand in terms of well since the, both of these are to do with the slopes of supply and demand. What this actually means, if we look here, if we ignore the negative sign, that the slope of the inverse supply will be steeper than the slope of the inverse demand. In other words, in terms of a picture, this here slope is steeper than this here slope, uh, ignoring the negative sign. In other words, the S line is steeper than the demand. this demand set line. Supply set line, steep and demand set line. S steeper than D. To convince you of that, let's do a case where S is not steeper than D. I'm sure you'd be interested in doing that. I asked my, some of my students to go home and do it. I don't know how many of you have actually bothered. Okay, so here is a case where the demand set here is steeper than the supply. Yeah. So let's try doing the same story of the cobweb model. Same my price, initial price is here, P0. So this is what I want. He's going to supply D1. Well, God, that just hits there, doesn't it? Okay. Q1. And then this one, the mindset. Oops, he's going to see. Aha, uh -huh, doesn't even meet, does it? If it does meet, it's going to be off. It's going to be off the first quadrant. It's going to be into the negative, which does not make sense, negative quantity. So there you go. In fact, if uh, I had drawn it so it's slightly a bit more steeper, then you can see that thing actually would diverge. In such a case, we say that the equilibrium is unstable. It doesn't mean that the equilibrium doesn't exist. It does exist because it's right here. It's just that the cobweb model doesn't kind of describe, it's not the right mechanism to describe um, movement to that. So in other words, um, we would think that the cobweb model would just be something which is momentary and then both people on the supply side and demand side will realize that it's not getting them to a equilibrium and then change the mechanism, act differently in other words. You know, because uh, people in the market aren't stupid, they act in such a way that uh, they get the best for themselves, so eventually uh, if there is a equilibrium, both sides will find it. But they wouldn't behave according to the cobweb model. Now, good, so we're finally done. We've said what the cobweb model is, we've described how it works, we've just said that it doesn't always, uh, it's not always the right mechanism to get us to equilibrium. And finally to say that, like with all these kinds of economic things, we start off with very, very simple supply and demand sets, here being straight lines. But just like for the static case, we can have a nonlinear, or we say for example, quadratic supply or demand curves. Okay, so this cobweb model can um, describe cases as well for the nonlinear case of supply and demand. Okay, so that's it. Hope that's been. Hope that sheds more light on the cobweb model.